I started filming this while on the way to go pick everything up like I normally do. And this next part, while I do mean everything I say in it, I kind of have a different direction for this video than I thought it was going to go in. Uh, I still want to show you this part so that you can see some of my thoughts on the current market. But really what this video is going to be about is how price charting and their prices for complete games is completely broken. Driving out to Hearst to buy Keep a left. lot that I saw on my Texas Retro Gamer Society page. Um, a guy that I've done a few deals with in the past uh, listed some boxed games. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many there are. There's probably 14 or so. Quite a few of them are good ones. They're all NES, Zelda, Mario 1 through 3, Battletoads, Punch-Out, Contra. So, decent games. The prices on those have gotten ridiculous in the last few months. Um, like the original Mario Brothers I used to sell for around 100. And I haven't gone through and completely priced it, but I think I'm probably gonna put it in there for somewhere around 250 to 300. So anyways, I'm paying $1,000 for all of these games. Assuming, I mean, I may not get them if they're, they're not in great shape because I'm going to want top dollar. I may pass on it, but I doubt that's going to happen. The, the idea of what is a deal nowadays has, has really changed. I mean, if, I, if I'm spending $1,000, it used to be that I would insist that I, I had to be able to get $1,000 back. I wanted to double my money, but deals like that are few and far between now. So I've got to look for stuff and kind of look between the lines higher end stuff has actually been working out uh, well for me. People are willing to spend the money and buy big ticket stuff, uh, especially Nintendo 64, some Super Nintendo, and then, you know, NES, I think is becoming more and more niche, but there's still value there, especially with the big name games like this. I think that in the space that I've created, I have the ability to demand high prices and people, I've proven that people are willing to pay those prices for them. So, it's worth it to me to invest the capital to get these, but uh, kind of hurts when, you know, a year ago before all of this, this exact same lot of games would have been a couple hundred bucks. Just kind of have to change your thinking, shift a decimal point over and rethink about it. But uh, in, in the long run, you know, if I spend a thousand dollars and sell it all for 1500 and make 500, I'm making more than I would have if it would have been a couple hundred and I'd only make a couple hundred. So uh, even though the percentages and the margins aren't exactly the same, the profit is higher now. It can be worth it, you just have to be willing to put forth the capital and hopefully not have to hold on to it too long, but there is the possibility that I'll, I'll have uh, larger chunks of money um, tied up in inventory instead of free cash flow. So here's everything all stacked up. Got Taylor. So I've done quite a few deals with Taylor. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how many, probably at least four or five. But four, it's, yeah. It's been a couple yeah. years. Do you remember the last deal that we did? Uh, I don't know. It was probably a new when I was in Euless. Yeah, uh, so. Know, was, it, was it a bunch of Nintendos and NES stuff? Or, uh, it, no? So I actually filmed what I got. I didn't film you, but oh, um, yeah, yeah. it ended up being it was like a lot of just kind of regular NES games and like a, I think there was a loose copy of Zelda and then there were two boxed, a Mario 2 and a boxed Mario 3. Oh wow. Yeah. And I think I paid 60 bucks for that lot. Really? So like, nice, yeah. And then, yeah. so those games, I had them in my shop for probably six months or something. I put like 40, 50 bucks on them. It's and like these, these two games are going for like over 200 bucks each now. Yeah. Which is just, yeah kind of ridiculous yeah that's what that's a lot of the ones i didn't recognize like this one yeah that's a that's a good one to get your hands on i don't know i i would imagine i think you know mike tyson's punch out for I think sure cool. i think this has the uh i got this from retro palooza two one or two but it has the letter to the fans in it oh no way and i didn't even i just it was just you know it was a nice box and he said it's all in there and everything and i opened it up saw the game and took it and then i re realized later it has the it has the letter to the fans in it, which, you know, I remember at the time, like, I haven't kept up with the 
the NES market at all, but, and, uh, yeah, I haven't opened these in forever. This kid's putting together Mario Legos right now. Oh, God, you'll have to see my son. My son is just diehard. Look at that. I've never actually gotten a copy of this before. That is cool. Um, Dear player. I love it. That's worth the entire... <laughs> the entire thing. <laughs> so, uh, I think I had offered you, what, like eight fifty originally? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and he and said a competing store offered him a little bit more. So, who knows if that's true or not, but... It is It is very true. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to explain myself because I'm kind of... A, I've kind of been an exclusive seller to him because, one, he's right across the street from me. Yeah. And uh, I, j I just, um, I take him stuff all the time, so hopefully he'll forgive me for this one. But. This stuff right now, though, you just you got to jump on it. I mean, it's just everything's selling yeah. so well right now. So, um, all right. I'm turning this into a Pokemon card investment. So. It's probably smarter than I am. <laughs> all right. Went through them all. You sure you won't <laughs> take any left? <laughs> I'm pretty sure, man. I just rode across the street here in a minute and take it just a tiny list. So there you go. All right, man. It means a lot. Thanks. Appreciate it. No, I appreciate it. I know, I know, I know where you live. Not really, but <laughs> you know, yeah. you know where I'm normally at. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't count it either. So hopefully the oh, team yeah, can count. Want, yeah, right. Yeah. So here's what I got. Most of it was already in these protective cases. You can see from the glare coming off of them. The ones that weren't, I put them in cases. Uh, they were all complete. Most of them are in pretty good shape. As you saw with Taylor earlier, Punch-Out had the letter, fan letter, and uh, Zelda has all of its stuff. Um, so, you know, based on the condition of these, they're they're pretty, pretty valuable, pretty far up there, um, considering what I saw. So, go over how I priced each of these and what price charting had and my thoughts on it. So punch out, I priced this one at $400. Um, price charting's complete price for punch out was 20450. So uh, it's a pretty big difference. And the reason for that is that fan letter. They don't distinguish the difference between that. Um, Zelda was 140 on price charting. Uh, I've got it at 350. Mario one price charting had it at 141.60. I've got it at 300. Mario three uh, they had a hundred on it. I put it at 300. Mario two. They've got 85 on it. I put it at 250. Contra 163. I put it at 275. Duck Hunt. Uh, so this is the five screw hang punch variant. Um, it has never been punched. No, I think it maybe has been punched. I'm not positive. No, so that part hasn't been punched. Anyways, it's in good shape. Based on the comps, I par priced it at $275. Uh, price charting had it at $70 because there's so many different variations of that game. Uh, Battletoads, I put $250 on it. Price charting had it at $77.50, Friday the 13th. Um, they have $125. Uh, I put it at $175. So that's probably one of the closest ones so far. Jaws, I put it 100, they had 45. Blue Marlin, uh, I've got it at 75. Pressure has it at 40. Um, RC Pro Am, 65. Price charting price did at 30. Uh, Black Bass, um, 50. And price charting had it at, at 20. And then last but not least, Tecmo Bowl. Priced it at 40, price charting had it at 25. So the reason price charting is so wildly off is because their algorithm just doesn't pick up search terms properly for complete games. And they end up getting uh, just some ridiculous stuff in there and it dilutes the prices. And also 
there's always been a problem with price charting in that it doesn't factor in condition for anything. And when you're talking about complete games, especially for the NES, condition and completeness, uh, you know, game can be complete with uh, box, manual, and cart, but really there's other, other components to it, like the punch out with that letter to the fans. So they're not factoring the level of con completeness into the condition of it. And so, uh, since there's no sliding scale or variance in their pricing, you end up getting kind of funky pricing from price charting. So what happened was, uh, Taylor, I'm assuming priced all of these off, off of price charting and then knocked it down a little bit uh, and that's how he came up with his price because when I went through and added them all up on price charting it wasn't too horribly off from what he wanted but I knew some of these games were higher I just didn't know that uh, so many of them were gonna be so much higher so where does that leave me I mean the the total amount of the games I thought originally was gonna be around 15 to 1600 but I'm actually looking at like over $2,700 value if I can get it all sold for that price. So uh, the using price charting instead of eBay and Amazon and whatever else you can find for historical comps, uh, you really kind of miss out and lose out on pricing. So, you know, there's a huge discrepancy there between what I paid for these and what they're actually worth with the current conditions of the market. Now, not everybody can get the highest price for games. Uh, it's not necessarily that, you know, I have more skill than anyone else. It's just that I have a storefront set up, so I'm able to command a higher price than a lot of other people would be able to. Uh, additionally to that, the uh, market being where it is right now, I could come crashing down at any time. I don't know that these games in a month are going to be worth what I priced them at. So hopefully I'm able to get them sold rather quickly. There's enough people that are looking for these uh, in these conditions that's willing to pay that premium price to get them so they don't sit forever. And a year from now, my $300 Mario is back down to being worth 100 bucks. So um, basically, I've got a lot of risk. Uh, a pretty good amount of capital into this investment, but there can be a high reward. Now, if I do sell them for these prices, am I gonna give any extra to Taylor? Absolutely not. My reason for that is that I paid his asking price. I even tried to negotiate and he refused to. I paid the price that he wanted. He is a collector. He has the ability to look up the same data that I do he priced them where he wanted them and I paid that price. So everything else is fair game after that. If you made it this far, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, tell me what you think. Am I an a-hole for not wanting to give Taylor more money? Uh, am I crazy? Am I crackhead for pricing everything so high? I want to hear your opinions on this. Let me know.